Are you ready to reinvent your approach to innovation? Today we're going to combine Perplexity and Notebook LM's newest features along with insights from Rick Rubin's book The Creative Act into a powerful framework for creative thinking and innovation. This is the most practical and repeatable process I've found in a decade of working with successful software founders. This is a process that you could easily charge thousands of dollars for. I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it today for free so there's no guesswork needed, just real results. If you're not familiar with Rick Rubin, he's a legendary music producer. His ability to distill creativity down to its essence has influenced icons such as Johnny Cash, Jay-Z, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This has cemented his reputation as a master of creative clarity and reinvention. This book, The Creative Act, is the best roadmap to the creative process I've ever found, and trust me, I've looked. The first step of the process is inspiration and observation. This includes being as open to the world around you as possible. Think of yourself as a camera. You want to set your aperture as wide as possible so you don't miss any good Good ideas. On this topic, Rick Rubin says, to vary your inspiration, consider varying your inputs. Epiphanies are hidden in the most ordinary of moments. Train yourself to see the awe behind the obvious. I love that he also says even spontaneity gets better with practice. I'm hopping right into the cheat sheet. I make one of these for every single video that I create. This one's over 20 pages long, goes into a lot of things we're not gonna have time for today. You can grab a copy of this and over a hundred others by supporting this channel and joining the Patreon. There's a link in the description for that. But the first prompt I want to get to here is this one. It takes an observation that we've had and blows it out into a diverse set of ideas. We're going to pop this right into perplexity, copying and pasting it right here into perplexity. And if you're brand new to perplexity, you can just think of it as Google on steroids. It goes out and does a ton of Google searches and pulls the best of the best back for you to analyze in Notebook LM. Today's example is all about a wellness retreat business idea that I had from talking with some people about how everybody is super addicted to their screens. Being here in Maine, there's a lot of different places for a wellness retreat. So let's see what perplexity pulls together when I ask it to generate some ideas around this. Killer, just as expected, Perplexity took that idea, that brief observation, and blew it out into all sorts of ideas from physical wellness, artistic wellness, nutritional culinary, holistic therapies, the list goes on and on, all with awesome insights and citations here. A couple really cool new features in Perplexity is this ability to select different models. We're gonna get into this in detail in a second, but just going from auto for quick things to pro, if you're on the pro plan, can really extend and expand your search. The other cool thing is this, uh, how you point it. So this used to be called the focus feature, but now you can just ask it to look at the entire internet or look at just academic sources or look at social media sources. I think it digs into Reddit quite a bit and you can do different combinations of these, which wasn't possible before. But now that we've taken our observation and inspiration, pumped it into perplexity, it's time to cultivate Cultivate these seeds. This is the process of recording or preserving those initial sparks of inspiration. We want to get to the core essence of what that observation was all about. Here's another quote from Rick Rubin's book. He says, faithful note taking by a connected observer helps prevent special moments from getting lost in the churn of excitement. And that term note taking brings to mind one of my favorite AI tools, Notebook LM. If you're not familiar with Notebook LM, you just go to notebooklm.google and click this try Notebook LM. It's a free tool with tons of capabilities. I'm just creating a new notebook for all the ideas that perplexity generated. I'm going to label this wellness retreat business and I'm going to load it up with all those sources right here. You can find these sources in perplexity just by clicking on the little um, numbers at the end of each different thing it mentions and then just copying and pasting that link right into Notebook LM. And now that I've got all those sources loaded in, I'm gonna grab this prompt from the cheat sheet that basically asks it to help me understand the core essence of this idea by generating a lot of different possibilities. You can see that right here. Let's see what it comes up with. Man, that was super fast and it did a great job honing in on exactly what I need to focus in on for the core of this idea, such as who's the target audience and what are the specific needs I need to address with a bunch of ideas about that. There are a lot of new Notebook LM features that can help with this step. You can load in way more sources than you used to be able to, but also there is this pinned notes that a lot of people don't really use. So we wanna save this note to the clipboard and in this way we can always refer back to it 
and then we can even start to analyze the pinned notes instead of the sources themselves, which can be super helpful. Another killer new feature is that we can actually join the discussion inside of the podcasts now. Now that we've captured the core essence of our idea, we want to move into this exploration and experimentation phase. This is where we make connections between disparate ideas. We're going to engage in freeform play and embrace any unexpected accidents or imperfections. Here's a prompt that we can use in either Perplexity or Notebook LM here. What are 10 what-if questions that could help us explore unconsidered aspects or potential transformations of this idea? Perplexity just crushed it. Look at this. Exploring what if the retreat operated as a pay-it-forward model where guests paid fees that covered their stay plus a future guest? What if highly connected guests were assigned a digital twin who continued their online presence while they disconnected? And here inside Notebook LM... What if the retreat specifically targeted pre-teens or incorporated analog wellness ideas? Pretty cool. So one of the coolest new features inside of Perplexity is the ability to create a page from what you have been uh, searching here in your thread. You do that by clicking these three little buttons up here, convert to a page. And when you do that, you get something like this. So you can publish this and share it out with your team or maybe other people to get their perspectives. You can also do that by sharing out the uh, podcast that you've created inside of Notebook LM. And if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, you just click this little generate button here in Notebook LM. Once you have some resources in, it takes a few minutes and it creates a killer podcast that you can share with your team to get feedback on your new innovation. But wait a minute, while I was making this video, I began to think, why do these good ideas always happen in the shower? So I did a little digging into that and found out it was because of that uh, hot water brings the blood to the brain, which can increase dopamine. And it also puts you into a relaxed default mode network, um, you know, mood where you, these ideas can just bubble up to the surface. So I decided to have a little fun with that. I created this prompt where I ask the large language model to pretend it's taking a shower and pretend that blood is flowing to the brain, increasing the dopamine, etc. I'm going to show you how this works in a second. There's a very specific model inside of Perplex that I think is going to be best for this prompt. But now that we've explored and played around with a bunch of different options, it's time for the refinement phase. And in this phase, we're going to be taking a step back to assess our work. We're going to be identifying what's working and what might need some improvement. And we're also going to start iterating and refining these ideas through multiple drafts or versions. This is kind of where the craft comes in, where the last part was the, the play. This is a little bit of the editing work. I love Rick Rubin's quote when it comes to this, where he talks about distilling a work down to get to as close to its essence as possible is a useful and informative practice. When you get to this phase, one of the prompts that works the best is asking it to evaluate the creativity and innovation of the ideas around your draft, considering uniqueness and potential to disrupt or improve upon existing solutions. And Perplexity's new feature where it allows you to go access these other models is critical when it comes to this step. The best models for this step are these reasoning models. We have access to the DeepSeq R1, which is a reasoning model, and, an ac and access to this O3 Mini, which is OpenAI's reasoning model. These reasoning models are a lot different than your normal chat GPT T. With normal ChatGPT, you ask a question and then you'll get a quick response kind of just off the top of its head. But with these models, you're asking it, hey, think deeply about this and, you know, really spend some time considering everything that I've given you and then give me your best output. With these reasoning models, sometimes it can take up to minutes of these large language models thinking in the background. So for this step, it's really important that you use one of these models. These are also the models that I think would work best for this shower prompt. I'm going to copy and paste that one right into perplexity. And I'm going to choose this Reasoning O3 Mini, which is the OpenAI reasoning model. You can see in here that it is thinking, and not only is it doing these searches, but it's deeply considering everything here. These are the different phases it went through as it was doing its reasoning or its deep thinking. And this came up with a dynamic flow state toolkit, a system designed to help individuals intentionally replicate the conditions that foster creativity and insight. It goes through all the different concepts there that it came up with while it was 
taking a shower. <laughs> now that we've refined our idea, it's time to release it into the world. This is a step that I always struggle with, but you've got to let go of that perfectionism and let your ideas see the light of day. This may mean, you know, a fully fledged release, or it may just mean a beta release that you, you know, test and see how people react to it. This may be my favorite quote from Rick Rubin that we're going to go through today. He says, if you've truly created an innovative work, it's likely to alienate as many people as it attracts. The best art divides the audience. If everyone likes it, you probably haven't gone far enough. A cool prompt to use for this section, which can be used in either Perplexity or Notebook LM, is to ask it to play the role of a potential audience and evaluate the ideas uh, that you've generated there and think about anything that might be confusing or require clarification for the audience. So this may be a prompt you want to run right before release just to make sure you've got everything checked off and that there's no final tweaks that might really put it over the edge. A couple tools that come to mind for releasing stuff quickly, if it's code or anything software based, the tool called Replit makes it very easy to publish software, you know, beta early, you know, MVP type products that you can get out there and get some feedback on. If you're running a B2B service business, LinkedIn is the place to go. You know, anything else, I think YouTube is a great place to test ideas. And honestly, I've really struggled with Instagram. So, you know, putting stuff out on Instagram can be a real challenge to get organic growth. But once it's out in the world, that is not the end of the process. The final step here is renewal and re-engagement. So this part of Rick Rubin's process talks about taking a little time to rest and recharge after completing a project, reflecting on what you've learned and how you've grown. It also involves re-engaging with the world and beginning the cycle of inspiration and observation anew. So it's a circular process here. Regarding this step, Rick Rubin talks about returning with a clear perspective, and it's through this process that true learning can occur. He talks about unlearning as well, so that can be a useful concept to think about. A prompt that might be helpful in this phase is to really get some feedback about the entire process from the large language model. So asking it about key creative decisions that were made during the project, loading in some information about the project, and asking it to help you identify different factors that influence these decisions and their impact on the final outcome. So this may be a time you step back and look at the process as a whole and how you can continue to iterate on all of these steps and make sure that they fit with exactly what you're trying to achieve. For this phase, a second brain software like Notion is critical. It's only in keeping track of every step along the way that we can look back and say, hey, where could I have done that differently? How can I update my process documents? And how can I streamline this system to work better each time? All right, so now you have a complete process for innovation. In a world where AI can do a lot of the heavy lifting, it's coming up with these creative and innovative, fully fleshed out, refined, honed in ideas that is really gonna be the skill you need because AI is gonna be able to take care of a lot of the rest. And I think this is one of the last things humans are gonna be very useful for. And while creating this video, I wanted to push myself to see how creative I could get with using these tools. So I decided to ask Claude to create a little simple software project to help with creative endeavors. And Claude came up with this awesome wheel here that you can spin anytime you're stuck and it will tell you about something you can focus on. So here it says, try an upside down approach. Let's spin it again. Okay, now it says, make it into a musical. So these are cool little pieces of software you can think about building very easily with AI that can keep you on your toes and keep you creative. I've got the prompt for that here in the cheat sheet. I'll link to that artifact below so you can test it out, but there's a ton in this cheat sheet. Like I said, it's over 20 pages long and it goes into each one of these steps, has, I would say, maybe over 100 prompts easily but with each step, there's a section for, you know, just general ideas, scientific ideas. So if those are the types of innovations you're looking for, and then, of course, business and professional ideas for each and every step that we went into. And there's even a custom GPT that walks you through each step of this process. It includes the instructions for that custom GPT. So you can see how I built that there. But this is a quick and dirty way to walk through.
through this. It's just by using this work innovation bot, and this will walk you through each different phase that I showed you. That's all available to my Patreon supporters. There's a link in the description. You're going to get access to that along with over a hundred other resources just like it. There's some coaching options in there as well. But now that you've got a solid innovative idea, it's time to build a strategy around how you're going to roll that out and how you're going to get traction to that. So that's the next video I want you to check out. It's a video all about creating strategy using AI. It's one of my favorite videos, so I'll see you over there. Make your dreams come true.